everybody says you single yourself and distinguish yourself out from what you're doing as a result of what you've seen that is why I am concerned about I'm not carried away you know Nigerians are not going to be carried away again let me go politics now by the vituperations of politicians we're going to put you on the spot and really? we're going to that ask you going to oh yes we're going to put you on the spot you're going to speak and you're going to tell and they're going to ask this thing you said what will you be able to do when you will give you power what about the that's the only time we can begin to decode because you know the hearts and the minds of the people so you know that are in leadership just just a minute you said the issue of perception yeah. is very strong, mm -hmm. be it on social media or yeah. on mainstream yeah. media. Yeah. And when the administration presides over that single mantra of fighting corruption, yeah. and you find situations whereby some public officials are indicted, or should I say allegedly indicted to an extent, and we're expecting to see that level where the, uh, the judicial system will be able to take on these cases, to a logical conclusion to a point whereby even cases that seem to be prima facie mm. seem to have been swept under the carpet. Mm. Some of these cases will range from even reports we're expecting from the um, former uh, SGF, yeah. which hasn't happened up to today. So in terms of perception, how would you say that this government is going about fighting corruption? Because if they don't get it right now, possibly this will come back as a hunting factor. Let me tell you something. In, in terms of perception, they are scoring very high. But in terms of the, the real thing, that's, that's where Amnesty International and all those things will not come. They don't look at perception. They look at the indices, the numbers. In terms, in terms of perception, this, this, this administration is scoring very, very high. However, let me give you a scenario. The president wins the election and they won cost the, the, the leadership of judiciary, the leadership of the National Assembly, and his leadership in the executive as a guy's I'm going to drive this nation on this agenda. I need your support. And they are able to tear apart the way they're going to go and develop a strategy. You won't be getting all this that you're seeing. That is why it looks as though, in spite of the whole um, hula balloon, as if uh, you're, you're seeing 4.5, 9 point something million dollars, you know, and all that, the, the, the agencies, international agencies, are not carried away by it. They are looking at what is, are these people strategic? Do you hear? That's how they go. That's how they proceed. They are scientific. This is an, so, not, it's not, it's not an art. What so you're seeing is the art of fighting corruption. You need to see the science of, of fighting person. corruption. So is it possible that in this kind of situation we find ourselves, or that a chaotic situation, unstable situation, mm. that you're able to, de to find a defining moment, or what would stop an individual from locating a defining moment, leadership style or leadership itself? Listen, I, and I like your question, and, and let me tie it with two things. It is one thing to have a vision statement, and it's a different thing to have a vision. A vision statement explains your vision. What happens is a lot of people live on mantras that they don't believe in. There is no internalization of the mantra. So you keep mounting, this economy is, uh, this, this uh, administration is uh, 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 fighting corruption, um, like economy. what is economy? Mm. So, what so is that? If you, if you really and truly have drilled down, by now you should be able to create, just as the people now who are now working there will come up and now begin to say clearly, okay, if, look at what we're doing now, ease of doing business. Those are the components of the economy. These things came about because of the virus people that now are occupying. But these things are supposed to be speaking to the, the, to the vision. Everything you're doing, just as I said, the vision is what, you do, what you're doing as a result of what you're doing, which is exemplified so, by the strategy. But the strategy drives... Uh, the, Digo, I, the question I ask, you, you, you tied it to vision now, yeah. but I asked the question... Because what, it, is, it, is, it what, all rises and falls on vision. Okay. So I what don't he care does, how strategic you are. How, you know, so it's how, not a question of leadership no, style that affects, affects no, vision. No, it can, it can. So style. we have other authoritarians, we have the lies affair, we have um, democratic, we have the, is it paternalistic? paternalistic yes. So if you have this kind of leadership styles, do they, how do they affect fulfillment of to, that I vision? I was going to come to that. When you say somebody is autocratic, which is very, you know, it's, it's a function of the fact. And I hope you can tie it to the yes, political that's situation. Yes, you know, finally, finally determines how things are done. And I will tell you what drives it. 
what determines what then you have the laser fair mm -hmm. when you have the people that work with you and then you just give, allow them to do the work okay we'll, we'll allow you to conclude on that point but i'll quickly have to take a break now we'll be back in just a moment join us again welcome back so continue on your okay so i said there are four and there are others the four leadership styles the authoritarian this guy does and takes decisions without consulting anyone then of course you have the uh, democratic you know, he consults people and gets some consensus. Because of the laissez faire, this laissez faire allows his people to do things and then takes, takes and then he reports to them. And then, of course, of the paternalistic, this guy deals with people based on, he does, you know, he does things to them. And, and, and there are reasons why any of this can be utilized. The challenge for, for leadership really is to identify which one. There are days to be autocratic. Because if you want to start getting, be getting democratic, this won't get done especially for time-bound issues. But you cannot be, you cannot, you will not be able to be laissez-faire if your people do not have the content. The, where the power resides, decides really which of the models you use. If a leader has all the, everything is domiciled in him, he is prone to be autocratic. But if the people that he is with are very skilled and very detailed, he, stand, he tends to consult them. Now, it, 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 it behoves on leadership to know where the strength to get the work done, you know, resides. So if you look at somebody like, say, your president, or the past president, Jonathan, or maybe your person, you can determine who and where they play. You know, most leaders will always go and hire people that seemingly know more than them, because that is the principle of, 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 of leadership. Because if, if I know more than you, then of what reason have I brought you on board? So the key thing really here is that if you are in leadership, you must identify your proclivity and how you want to operate. The danger in laissez faire, then you start having things like, you know, people are, uh, you, you, would, you, you, do, you do micromanagement, what people say in, but in autocratic. However, in laissez faire, you will, you will do damage control when things have already done, gone bad because you've left things to your subordinates. You only hear about it. You know, an example is, you know, I'm just hearing that. You know, uh, my instructions are not followed. Absolutely, that that you know, the president is, in, in, and, and and there's nothing wrong in any of this strategy, any of these leadership styles. It's just that for each and every one of them, you must be aware, you must de-risk it. There's always a risk to anyone that you use. You must de-risk your being autocratic. It means you may shut off people, so you must find a way to always allow people to speak. If you get too laissez-faire, people are going to they're going to ride on you. Well, we hope so you need, to, you need to you need to de-risk it. Yeah. Thank you so much indeed for talking to us and giving us those explanations of <laughs> the different leadership styles. Always that we time, have. time, time, time. <laughs> <laughs> Pascal Ladebo, indeed, uh, uh, public affairs analyst. Thank you so much indeed for talking to us on Sunrise Daily. And that's how Thank it's you. been on the show today. Thank you so much for watching. I am Gimba Umar. And I am Neota Ebe. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. I am Ajuri Ngilali. Have a beautiful day. The views and opinions expressed by guests on this program are those of the maker and do not necessarily reflect the views, opinions and endorsement of Channels Television.